Hello? Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can. Fantastic. Hey, it's Mac Palmer at USCB. How we doing? Good. How are you? Great. Thank you. Now, this is the first one of these I've moderated, so I'm cautiously optimistic, but I got this far. This is the first one I've done, so. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Well, great. Well, so how many presenters do we have? Three? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so we've got, then we've got, are two of you here so far or? Yep. Yes. Two of us are on. Okay, okay. Fantastic. So we've still got a couple of minutes. I mean, I can, I can walk through this stuff. We can wait a second to see who's our third person we're waiting on. I forget his name. No, that's how I was just trying to remember his name. That's okay. We're all just faceless, nameless people here. Well, we have faces, <laughs> just no names. Uh, now, where are you guys from? What schools? So I am from Charleston Southern University. Okay, fantastic. And I'm from William Peace University. Great, great. Yeah. Well, I'm at the University of South Carolina, Beaufort, uh, uh, down south of, uh, of Charleston. So, um, I, mean, I haven't even looked. Do you guys know how many people are in the session tonight? Twelve, I just saw, so not too many. Okay, well, it's getting kind of late in the day, anyway. Yeah, I, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see how how we do. Yes. Uh, how's your fall looking so far, as far as just participating and seeing people or that kind of thing? It depends on the event for us. Sometimes we have really great turnout and sometimes it's, it's kind of a flop, but I think it's good for us getting that practice in, just kind of figuring out how to do our best virtual events. Sure. Yeah. Sure. What about y'all? You know, we, we've been, we've had a few virtual events that got off to a slow start. We're about to start to do some on-campus uh, tours for the first time and, you know, with small groups and social distancing. Yeah. First couple have been empty, but now they're starting to fill up. So we're hoping that's a sign that people are feeling comfortable to move forward. Hope so. How's everybody doing? Hey, good. Hey. How are you? I'm doing fine. Tired, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ready to go home. But we got. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> got a bit of a wait. So. Yeah, I decided to just. <laughs> Go ahead and come on home. So <laughs> I should have. Maybe I should have. Oh my god. Yeah, I did. I did too. Well, let me make sure. So is everybody good with how what the, just knowing the session it goes for forty five minutes? I've been told fifty seven thousand times I have to put a hard stop at forty five minutes, um, and I know everybody will be ready to be done by that time too. Uh, people's cameras won't be on or anything like that. They can just ask questions and uh, we'll be able to type those in at the end of your sessions and I'll let you guys all introduce yourselves and talk about your, your specific institutions and then one of you, however you want to do it, can go through and, and look at the questions and maybe read those out and respond. Don't expect to get to everybody's questions necessarily depending on how many there are. And then I'll mention when we start that the session will be um, um, <coughs> Reported and they can get it off the CACRO site as well. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, okay, I'm trying to look to see how, I know we, we've still got about six minutes. Um, there it is. I'm supposed to turn off the, sh the raise hand thing and I'm trying to see how to do that. I'm so jealous of y'all's backgrounds. I think my Mac needs an update because mine are not working and it's driving me bonkers. 
it, 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 it is all right. It is all right. <laughs> Mine's honestly just on to like hide the rest of my bedroom, you know? <laughs> See, there, I know. I'm like, okay, maybe my bookshelf over here will, you know, be fine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I think we've all been doing it this so good. long and they've been doing this so long for now that we're all just like, all right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is at this point. I'll tell, I hope I don't fall asleep. I'm trying to get my energy up. I feel you. Yeah. <sighs> I know I had said when we met, I wasn't going to do a presentation, just to update. I'm just going to do one slide, just so y'all know. <laughs> hey, okay, that's cool. I just need a little something to like go <laughs> off of and put up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, so, yeah, yeah the point. We talk, so I didn't get um, a student volunteer like I wanted. Everyone's yeah. um, busy. So, which, you know, that's fine. So I have like a tiny like 40 second video and then I have like a couple slides but they'll be so fast and yeah but, yeah that's it yeah yeah I've, I've got a short one I've got two main slides a couple of information slides cool. and we'll have to kind of make it eight minutes I've got to do a little extra talking well yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with finishing early we've all had long days <laughs> You said it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I know. <laughs> this is like this is like about hour twelve or so for everybody, isn't it? Yes, sir. You. <laughs> you got that right. I, I I feel like a like when you do a night program at a college. Yeah. Program, you know, kind of got exactly. Yeah. No, that's right. That's yeah. right. The good so, old days, the travel days. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> I but know. at least during travel, you're like somewhere new and, you know, so you, just, you expect to drink coffee at 8 p.m. and yeah. <laughs> well, drink something. Yeah, <laughs> drink something at 8 p.m. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, that is the truth. But I do kind of miss that it's not happening. And I don't kind of miss it. I miss it a lot. Um, yeah. And being, you know, and I don't, I don't do nearly as many as I used to, but I always tell my folks that you have to, here's what I expect. I expect you to show up on time, be there till it's over and stand. If I, if I'm this old and I can do that, I expect you to do the same thing. Yeah, I hear that. Exactly. And, and you just miss the interaction. I <coughs> see students on campus and I'm like, do I know you? It's hard to know with the mask on, and so. Right. <laughs> There's so many times I've been like, who is talking to me right now? I've got to get a few steps closer. That's right. Okay. So we got about two minutes.
Okay, let's see if I can get this thing started. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, the CACRO presentation this afternoon. I'm Mac Palmer from the University of South Carolina, Beaufort. I want to let everyone know that you can ask questions throughout the session through the Q&A button. You can type your questions and the panelists will answer those in just a moment at the end of their presentations. Your camera and microphone are turned off. And we want to encourage you, as we hope you've already done, to be signing up for more sessions at www.cacro.org. And this session will be um, recorded and you will be able to see that on the cacro.org site in the future. So I will turn it over to our, our panelists today. All right, hey everyone, welcome, glad you guys are here. Um, we're just gonna do a round robin and introduce ourselves really quickly and then we will get going um, to let you guys know um, which of us, you know, where we're from um, and what we have to offer for you guys. So um, first of all, my name is Amanda Johnson and I am from Charleston Southern University. So if you aren't familiar with Charleston, South Carolina, you're going to get familiar today. Um, but I've been working at CSU about three years and I'm also a grad student here. So glad you guys are here. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. My name is uh, Rebecca or Bex Hyman. I work at William Peace University in the heart of downtown Raleigh, and I'm so excited to speak with you guys today. Hey, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, my name is Bernard Allen from Living Arts College, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, a small art-based school. And so we look forward to sharing with you all tonight uh, as we enjoy this session and and as we move along, so hey, welcome, come on in. That's great, perfect. All right, I'll start us off. As you can see, I am actually from my living room. They have super cool backgrounds. I need to update. Um, all right, so um, like I said, my name is Amanda. I'm with Charleston Southern University. We are about 25 minutes from the downtown Charleston area and about 30 minutes from all the main beaches that we have around. Um, so it's kind of nice. I like to tell students it's, it's nice to be able to be close enough to take advantage of that. But then typically if you want to choose a small school, you kind of like that one-on-one -on -one attention, close-knit groups. And so it's nice to be able to come back to a home base and kind of have your own community as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and um, show you guys just a quick um, little video that we made for some of our well for our incoming class this past fall just to get them acquainted to downtown Charleston so hope you enjoy this and then we will look at a few other things hey future bucks my name is Brittany and I get to tell you about your new home Charleston South Carolina Charleston has so much to offer from historical sites like the USS Yorktown to the many arts festivals you will never be bored I always enjoy going downtown and finding a new restaurant on the weekends Charleston has some of the best food in the south there's so much you can get into from going to the beach to a second Sunday on King Street to shag dancing on the Cooper River Bridge you are going to love living in Charleston we can't wait to see you on campus in just a few short days let us know if we can help in the meantime Time. Go Bucks. All right. So as Brittany told you, there is definitely beaches. Um, as far as like landscape as well, we have a lot of different county parks um, that are free around campus. We actually have one right next door to campus called Wanamaker County Park, and it actually has a water park element too, and it's free for students. So I love that. That's always really nice because we hardly get a fall season. So um, that's always really good just to go splash around in the water. Um, and then we also have the West Ashley Greenway that's around the city as well. 
well. So it's really great for hiking, biking, um, and walking. And so it's on the marsh water as well, which is really fun to see. Um, I'm going to get my PowerPoint pulled up. Um, one of the things that I love to point out about Charleston specifically, and just like being, whether you're from a smaller city now, you know, smaller, large high school, anything like that, um, being in a larger city gives so much opportunity for growth. And so I know that all three of us can agree on that. It brings you opportunity to serve in a community and it brings you opportunity career-wise. So I wanna share with you what that um, really looks like at Charleston Southern. So, like I do this like so, why you like wait to share your screen, here we go. All right. Um, <laughs> they're laughing because they know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> so um, again, that is the view of one of the views of downtown Charleston. It's called the Holy City because you can basically see a church steeple from anywhere you are ever in the city. Um, and if you guys look in the middle of the screen in the very back, there is like one of the triangles of the Arthur Ravenel Bridge. And so when I first moved to Charleston, I actually did come from a really, really big high school, um, but really kind of actually knew I wanted a smaller school. So just like some encouragement that if you were looking at being near a larger city, um, Charleston at least has a really great way because most everything is on a bridge if you go anywhere. and the Arthur Ravenel Bridge kind of gives you like a vantage point to try to figure out where you are in town. So it makes it a little bit easier to get around and find, you know, your route back to campus. Um, like I said, being closer to a larger city gives a lot of opportunity, um, but it also kind of makes those moments on campus a little bit sweeter. So I just wanted to point out a few of our little quick facts here about CSU and the fact that we have over 50 different clubs and organizations. Every single club and organization on CSU's campus does have to do one service-based project per semester. And so this is something that that club or organization is going out into the community and doing for for the Charleston community. So it's a really fun thing to see um, all of our clubs and all of our students, faculty and staff really getting involved and getting to know their city of Charleston. Um, so this one, I, I do kind of want to spend a little bit of time on. Um, this is something that is has been a part of our strategic plan, and it really is the passport to purpose system. Um, and I'll tell you how it um, falls into kind of being around a big city. So this system really represents the tangible difference a CSU education makes in preparing students to go the extra mile. So for a CSU education to produce maximum advantage, students must be exposed to a holistic development and not just a degree granting exercise. So the the whole concept of passport to purpose, which we kind of send students through, is just really helping you hone in on what it is you wanna study, what those career options are, and then putting you out into our community here to actually explore those possibilities and see if that follows along with your major. So that passion, comes um, into play freshman year when you leave home you're kind of just discovering what that passion is um, exploring career options and then the pathway really comes in sophomore year where you typically hone in on one specific major um, and you kind of figure out what it takes to graduate you start looking at internship opportunities around the community and then as juniors are really looking at your potential you are um, going into your high level courses, you definitely have done an internship by this time. And then the purpose your senior year is really declaring what you want your purpose in life to be and what that means career wise for you and going into the Charleston community to fulfill that purpose. So this is something we put into play through our internship programs, um, service in the community and your academic advising all together. These are just a couple of examples. So part of our mission is integrating faith in learning, leading, and serving. And if I didn't say it before, sorry, I forgot maybe, but we are a private Christian institution. Um, so it's integrating faith in learning, leading, and serving. And so this serving part, like I mentioned, um, these are just some examples of ways that that um, is done across the, bo the board. So we have tons of opportunities in Charleston and across the globe. Of course, there is study abroad, but there's also service opportunities over the summer, um, through spring break, all types of different different ways to get involved in the community. 
Um, and then of course, like I said, it's nice to have that home base back on campus. And so here are just a couple of things to get plugged in when you come back to campus um, and you're done exploring the Charleston community. These are some great things to take advantage of. And then I wanted to give a quick, quick, quick overview of these are just our steps to en enroll um, and a few different ways that you can visit campus. I love coming to any of these because you will definitely have time to go downtown. We always encourage like I, every student I meet with, I talk to them about restaurants that they want to go for lunch or if they're staying for dinner and what they're doing um, in this city. And so this is just um, ways to do that and then as your enrollment counselor starts getting to know you and talks with you on your visit you will definitely be able to get some suggestions um, so i will go ahead and go to this slide as i finish up talking about a couple of charleston things so if you want more information you're welcome to scan that and fill out our inquiry form and then we have our main session on september 24th at 7 p.m um, for cacro um, but i want to share what one of my favorite things about charleston is so i feel like there is, you know, there are very fancy things to do in Charleston. That is for sure. Don't get me wrong. And it can be expensive, but which isn't very fun for a college student. Mm -hmm. But I will say there are some really, really great events that the city puts on. So like Brittany said in the video, those small arts festivals, there's also something called restaurant week that happens for actually a month and a half. So they should change the name um but it's called restaurant week and you can go with eight of your closest friends and go downtown and have like a super fancy five course charleston meal for like 25 30 bucks so definitely college student prices and then we have a really great um, concert venue downtown that i love that's called music farm and there are tons of different types of concerts that they have there, all different musicians, and they typically sell tickets for $15 to $20. So definitely, you know, college student budget things that you can do um, around the, here, I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen so I can, you guys can maybe actually see me, but so around, um, the campus of CSU, I like to say, apart from the downtown area, right around campus is kind of like suburbia. So it's very safe. There is a mall 10 minutes down the road, tons of restaurants, whether it's chains or local places. Um, there's a Starbucks, like I could walk to Starbucks from campus. Um, and so we also have a job at a city coffee shop and a Chick-fil-A on campus. So a lot of opportunity right around here without having to immerse yourself in downtown, but it does give some really great opportunities. Um, so Thanks for listening. Glad you guys are here. Um, I am done and I will pass it to who's next. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amanda. Um, just awesome, Charleston. What an amazing city. One of my favorites. So thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about Raleigh, North Carolina today um, and William Peace University. So I'll just pull up my slide really quickly. I'm definitely going to do this so like Amanda. <laughs> Awesome. Perfect. So we have, is that showing my whole screen? Are we looking good? Are we looking good? Okay, great. So this is a little bit, I just kind of broke it down into three little main parts about William Peace University. So small university, big personality. Uh, and the three topics that I really wanted to touch on today were cooperating Raleigh colleges, um, being literally steps from downtown Raleigh and our internship um, opportunity. So I will just pop this off right here and get chatting to you. Um, so right off the bat, I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina. So I literally grew up, I want to say, maybe two and a half blocks from where William Peace University is today. Um, so I'm very well acquainted with Raleigh. It's been an incredible place to grow up. Um, and I did actually go away for college, but I couldn't resist coming back to Raleigh and being a part of this community. So I came back right after uh, my undergraduate degree and started working at William Peace University. Uh, so I currently am working with out-of-state students, which I think is just such a luxury um, because I get to really brag about Raleigh. Of course, everything that William Peace has to offer, but being in our location has so many different elements that brings about such an interesting and excited college experience. Um, so that's something I really, really enjoyed this semester and going in uh, working with out-of-state students as well. Uh, and then I am just 
obsessed with the greenery that we have in our campus. Um, we have so many massive oak trees uh, looking over our main lawn, which then if you turn to the opposite way, you're looking out onto our entire city skyline, uh, which I don't think you can beat. Um, and so our first topic that I kind of wanted to touch on today is our cooperating Raleigh colleges. And so what this is, is a kind of agreement that uh, William Peace University has with different uh, colleges, universities, and um, two-year community college institutions in Raleigh. Um, so William Peace University has teamed up with Emeritus, um, NCSU, so NC State, St. Aug, Shaw, and Wake Tech. Um, so this gives our students and the students at these other institutions the ability to take courses uh, at different colleges. So say you, you know, are very interested in some engineering courses. So that's something that we do not offer at William Peace University. Um, but you may know that NCSU has an incredible uh, program for engineering. So this would be an opportunity if you wanted to, you know, try a one-on-one -on -one class or see if maybe this is where your passion lies, you're able to take courses outside of William Peace University. You're able to connect with a group of students who aren't necessarily on your kind of home base uh, at Peace. So being able to kind of try out different disciplines, um, connect with different students on different campuses, and also make connections with different professors. Um, at William Peace University, we are very uh, adamant about seeing your educational experience as something that's propelling you forward, something that's aiding in your growth as a professional. Uh, so we're always looking for places to network, and I think the um, CRC really gives us a great opportunity to do that for our students. And then, if you go down this a little, we are literally steps from downtown Raleigh. Um, on my little icon screen, you can see our front main, the front building with pillars. If you were to be standing on that ledge right there, which you can, you would be looking out on the entire uh, skyline of Raleigh, North Carolina, which is just so cool knowing that you're kind of nuzzled in this like beautiful green uh, oasis right in downtown. But if you walk a few blocks down the street, you have so many different opportunities for you know, going out and, you know, trying out different restaurants, trying out different venues. There's so much just really at your fingertips. Um, also, something that I love to mention is that we are two hours away from the beach and two hours away from the mountain. So truly hard to beat um, if you are kind of somebody who enjoys the outdoors. I very often, especially throughout COVID, have been uh, waking up early and going to Topsail Beach for the day, keeping a distance from folks and then uh, coming home that evening, which I just think is such a great opportunity to be able to, you know, be outside and, uh, you know, have those on either side of Raleigh. And then moving forward, um, I just like to say that Raleigh has done such a great job of really engaging folks uh, as a community throughout COVID-19, which I think is just a testament to what a strong community we have in general. Uh, and I think that's something that William Peace University is doing a great job at too. Of course, we've all kind of been navigating some hurdles throughout this time, um, but it really does show how close of a community you have, uh, which we're really enjoying being able to have on-campus classes at the moment uh, and have our students feel really safe and sound on class or on campus. Um, but I really do think that kind of that's mirrored in our Raleigh community as well. And then last, I wanna talk about our internship uh, possibilities being in downtown Raleigh. Um, like I said, when you look out on Maine, you can see so many different businesses and corporations, so many different places where you are able to kind of dip your feet in and see where your passions lie. Um, so 100% of our students do complete an internship before graduating. Uh, we have our career design center, which is going to help you every step of the way, kind of figuring out where you want that internship to be. Um, we have so many different partnerships with downtown, different businesses and corporations. We've had students work with our um, different, our SGD programs. So simulation and game design have been working with Epic Games and Ubisoft. And then we also have folks who have been doing internships with Red Hat and Cisco. Um, so really, depending on what discipline you are exploring, we have so many different opportunities and partnerships to 
help cultivate community and conversations and hopefully prepare you uh, for the next steps of your um, career. Uh, yeah, so that is a little bit about Raleigh and William Peace University. And I will go ahead and stop sharing here. And then I will pass it on over so you can hear a little bit more about Raleigh from Living Arts. Alrighty, outstanding. It is uh, good to be here as always, as we just uh, learned about uh, Charleston, which is also one of my favorite places to visit. Uh, and of course, I'm right here in Raleigh, just north of, uh, of uh, William Peace University on the edge of Raleigh. Uh, and so we are here, uh, Northern Wake County, North Raleigh, uh, Living Arts College, we're a small art-based school. We're, uh, we got less than a thousand creative uh, students here. We've been here uh, for nearly 30 years uh, doing um, wonderful creative arts. And so uh, our programs, uh, being small, uh, we're able to have small class sizes. Our uh, student teacher ratio is about eight to one, uh, which is really good. Uh, but our six programs that we offer a bachelor of art degree in are animation, filmmaking, photography, audio production, interactive media, and interior design. And so we, we are, uh, on the cutting edge of, of technology uh, using what we call a principle called applied creativity, where we use uh, hands-on training, hands-on uh, environment, uh, where you put your hands on cameras, you put your hands on uh, audio boards, such as a solid state logic mixing console. Our photography students carry cameras around everywhere that they go. Our interior design students uh, work in an actual uh, studio. And so uh, being small, there are some advantages that we're able to take uh, advantage of uh, with our students, small class sizes in a unique environment. And so I, I love being in a small environment. Uh, Living Arts College, we are, I'm sure, like the other two schools, uh, it's like a, a family. It's almost like going to a family event every day. You, you see people you know. Uh, you, we know uh, most of the students by first name. Uh, we know their parents. It is a really close environment. Even our students who are off campus are family, just like our students who live on campus. Uh, of course, Raleigh is a wonderful town, uh, but any big city um, is going to be outstanding. And so uh, my approach today is to just give you some information, of course, about Living Arts College, uh, but also, though, uh, for those of you who are who are thinking, maybe you're from a small town uh, like I am, and uh, and maybe you, you are considering, you don't want to go to a big school, but you want to be in a big Town. Raleigh is the capital city uh, in the state of North Carolina, the number two uh, populated city in the state, a wonderful area. And so from a student perspective, um, there are several advantages and several benefits. And this is just a short list of some of the uh, benefits from a student perspective, being at a small school such as Charleston Southern or William Peace or here at Living Arts College uh, that is part of a large city. So there are a wide range of activities. There's a lot of things that you can become involved with in a large city. There are service groups as community activities. There are all types of things that you can become involved with uh, that you may not have that chance in a smaller environment. Uh, whether you know it or not, Raleigh is one of the fastest growing cities in the entire country. It's one of the, the best cities to live in. Uh, people are moving here daily from all over the country and all over the world. It is an up and coming area. And so that's what you find in many large cities. They are up and coming areas. Um, now, one of the things also, uh, you have to take advantage of public transportation. I know that looks funny, right? I, I, you probably never even thought about, uh, hey, if I'm in a big city, I'm not driving my car, how am I going to get around? Hey, one of the benefits and advantages is you can hop on a bus here uh, in Raleigh, and I'm sure most large towns, college students can ride the bus for absolutely free. All you need is get a card, you sign up online, you can go all over and explore uh, the city 
um, in many different areas and learn where you're at. And so, uh, of course, larger cities as well uh, have different light rails and subways. Uh, of course, uh, if you've got a cell phone with an app, Uber is right around the corner, right? Uh, but believe it or not, there's not an Uber in all towns. I'm from a small town, and I don't believe we have an Uber driver uh, in this town that I'm from. It's, it's two stoplights, right? So we don't need one. Uh, but though that's an advantage. Um, of course, you work your way through college because uh, some of you uh, will go through the financial aid process and, and will realize that you need some extra money to, to go out and explore these wonderful areas. Uh, go out to dinner, go out into a movie, uh, and it's easy. Most schools are located, uh, easy walk even to employment, you know, uh, everything from movie theaters to shopping malls to fast food to all kinds of areas, grocery stores, that you are able to actually make some money uh, while you're in school. Our students at Living Arts, they do uh, a lot of freelance work in the community. Uh, there are several large malls that have work done by our students there in advertising and marketing part of the graphic our graphic design or our media arts program. So you get a lot of work uh, through those elements. Um, networking, very important. Uh, when you're in a large city, uh, you can begin the network process the moment mom and dad drop you guys off. As a matter of fact, in this uh, virtual age that we're in now, uh, you can start their process as soon as you uh, apply and become accepted, meet other accepted students who have been admitted and begin that networking process. Of course, um, you're gonna experience new cultures. Okay, here in Raleigh, uh, there are people from all over the country, north, south, east, west, probably all 50 states. I've met people from about anywhere you can think of, but also from foreign countries. Uh, we have foreign students on our campus as well. And so you get to see uh, all types of cultures, uh, cultural events that are held downtown uh, at the Civic Center, at, at arenas, uh, all kinds of environment where you can explore food and, and culture and music through festivals, uh, getting your, your feet wet, so to speak, uh, increasing your mind and your, and your worldview in cultures. And lastly, there's a great range of resources uh, in large cities, um, resources um, such uh, as uh, co community organizations. Uh, you've got all types of counseling services. You know, you, you may get homesick the first couple of weeks. You may experience some, some issues. Uh, and, and in large cities, there are plenty of places around the corner. Uh, believe it or not, medical services. Most of you probably have never, may not even think about it. There's any parents out here who are going to see this, who are listening to this evening. Uh, medical services in a large city are, are better and different. In my hometown, uh, we've got a hospital, but it's going to take you a good 20 minutes or so, or even 30 minutes to get there versus where we're at here in Raleigh. We've got uh, in North Raleigh, uh, there are facilities within five minutes. If something happens, you get sick, uh, God forbid some emergency happens, you can get medical care uh, just because you're in a large environment. Uh, also, something you guys need to be considering as well, what are you going to do after college? Okay, uh, the, the benefits of going to a large city, uh, I'm, I told you I'm from a small city, live here now in Raleigh, and this is where I, I live. I went to school here, and now I live here. I'm not trying to go back to that small town. And so from a professional perspective, uh, from our game designers, our animators here on campus, our graphic designers, our music producers, and, and Foley artists who, who graduate, interior designers, uh, they graduate and leave and can stay in this area. Um, it's a large population, right? So you've got plenty of, of, of and it's fast paced as well uh, because of that large population. But these next two are absolutely important. Um, more jobs and career opportunities. That's just a given fact in a large area. Uh, here in Raleigh, as, as uh, my colleague from William Peace, uh, we have students who get opportunities at Epic Games. 
right now the largest, uh, most popular uh, game in the world, Fortnite, is produced out there. We have graduates that work for them. Same thing with companies such, such as Ubisoft. You've got Cree in this area, Glaxo, GlaxoSmithKline, Red Hat. You've got Wake, um, Wake Medical Centers. You've got all types of areas. And believe it or not, we're close, 20 minute drive. You'll be in a place called Durham, North Carolina, the home of Duke Hospital and the Duke system and all types of things in the Research Triangle Park, the hub of, of technology and uh, broadband such as Google Fiber. You've got so many career and job opportunities um, which in turn leads to higher salaries, right? So you got, you're gonna make more money, you have more opportunities. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you right now, Charleston is a great place for dining. I've been there, love the food, but Raleigh is not bad as, as at all either. Uh, all types of shopping areas, malls, retail, uh, but any large town is gonna have these things. Uh, they're not gonna, it's not gonna be like if you're from a small area, used to small things, uh, you know, you got the corner store, you got the gas station, uh, but here you've got wonderful shopping and dining, entertainment options. Uh, large, large cities have arenas and football stadiums, sports. Here in Raleigh, we've got the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, we've got PNC Arena that hosts all types of concerts and basketball. Um, and even for anybody who's a gamer out there, the esports uh, uh, conventions that are held in downtown Raleigh. Um, and of course, uh, more educational opportunities. Uh, as my colleague from William P. said, uh, there are colleges here in Raleigh, not just Living Arts, not just William P., but several. You get the opportunity to, to go by those campuses, meet friends from those places, network. Uh, in most large towns or large cities are going to have multiple uh, colleges, multiple, even at the community college level. So uh, if you want more information, please contact me. Uh, my name is Bernard Allen again. I'm director of admissions here at Living Arts College. Shoot me an email. Uh, go to our Instagram page, Living Arts College. Uh, like it, send us, a, a, a tag us on anything, uh, send us a direct message if you need to. But most importantly, uh, Tuesday, September 29th, 3 p.m. Listen, I need you to spread the news uh, and go and sign up through the CACRO uh, website uh, page on the high school programs. Sign up for our session and you'll be able to get detailed information about all the wonderful things that's happening here at Living Arts College from all six of our programs, uh, internships that we're doing. We'll even give you information about our new eSports program that's here on our campus. Uh, you'll get to meet some of our graduates and, and just have a wonderful time. Make sure you get your parents involved. So uh, I really appreciate you guys' attention and we will move on to our uh, next topic at this time. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Um, I don't see any questions in our Q&A right now. Um, but if you guys have any, we can hang on for a second. If you have come up with something, um, happy to kind of hang out for a few minutes if y'all come up with something um, about any of our schools or cities or I don't know anything. So when, when you were both of y'all were talking I thought of like more stuff about you know like there's I feel like with any of ours you can just go on and on about opportunities and jobs and yeah I definitely want to echo that that like kind of larger cities even if, if you even if you're from a small town and you're just so not used to it college is such an opportunity to make different friends and an opportunity for opportunities, which just sounds so silly, but it really, really is. And just embracing that. Um, there's a lot that larger cities have to offer and sometimes it feels overwhelming. Um, but at least when you pair it with a small college, that feels a little bit less overwhelming and like you have a, um, a really good spot somewhere. So yeah. Y'all have any closing remarks? I don't see any questions from our friends. Uh, let me just say, don't be afraid to try a small school in a big city. It's, uh, you're going to have similar experience, 
um, in a family, wonderful atmospheres. Um, I've actually been on both of y'all's campuses uh, uh, through my travels. And I'm telling you, uh, uh, don't discount small schools. Uh, you're going to have a wonderful experience um, and, and you will not miss out on anything, particularly when they're located in a large city. I'll just go ahead and echo that as well and bring up something that we didn't all really touch on um, because it's not super relevant to our topic, but I do think that a lot of times when folks hear small schools, they automatically think that the ticket price is going to be astronomical. Um, but I think for all of us, we can say that we do have really comprehensive financial aid and are definitely willing to chat and work with folks on making our small schools um, affordable and accessible. So I would definitely say don't count out small schools early on uh, based on the ticket price since a lot of times we do have different ways to be able to help folks out financially. Absolutely. Okay, well, my cat is trying to say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> Um, well, since there are no questions, we can go ahead and wrap up. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good evening. Go find some good to watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Have a good evening. See y'all. Well, thank everyone so much for joining us. Uh, and thank you presenters tonight for giving some great information about each of your institutions. When the session ends there are for our participants, you will each get a very quick survey. It's only four questions. We ask you to take just a moment to complete that. And please sign up for more sessions. There are sessions happening all day throughout the, the next month or so, all different kinds of topics, different schools. We encourage you to do that. We're all, this is taking our place of being able to do this in person. So we're all anxious to have the opportunity to talk with you. And this session will be available, has been recorded, and will be available on the CACRO website. And again, that's www.carao.org, and it'll be available in just the next few days. So thank you again for joining us this evening. Presenters, thank you again for a great job, and everyone have a great evening. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.